Welcome, everybody, to the BKBK podcast, where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. I'm Brandon Phillips, and I must admit that this week's loss to the Houston Texans is the best and most fulfilling loss that I've experienced as a Jets fan in a very long time. Now, I know it sounds weird. It does. <laughs> so, sounds silly. I know, I know it sounds weird, all right, and even illogical, but as we proceed with the show, I'm going to unpack this game, okay? And um, I'm confident that my point of view will make sense. Now, I'm here with my fellow co-host, Kerry Taylor. Yeah, all yeah. right, Hollywood. there we go. Hollywood, Kerry Taylor. I've got Brian Taylor. That's right. He's That's right. He's right. He, hey, by the way, he's rocking the Gotham City. We'll get it. This is right. hot. Yeah. You know, you should have got me that for Christmas, B. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have told you. might have. You, you might never have. know. So, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. Come on. And then we got Captain Kyle McKenna representing Baldwin over there with the Baldwin shirt, but with the matching N D, Notre Dame. ND. I'm rooting for them, too, man. I'm rooting for them, too, in this uh, national championship. I'm tired of uh, Alabama holding the throne for so long. Let's mm. get some new blood in there. Mm. Absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> so like I was saying, you know, as you know by now, these guys will tear me to shreds if I don't competently explain what the heck I'm talking about. So, you know what? Let's just dive in. The first thing that we're going to talk about here, guys and girls, we're going to talk about the Jets versus the Texans and the breakdown. We're going to break down this game. Sure. But also we're going to backtrack a little bit and break down... Um, the the Jets versus Bills uh, game and the Jets came out victorious. So why don't we start there, and then just trickle it on down. For me, um, I think that basically we beat the Bills, but we lost to them before, right? We played a great game yesterday, but we lost to the Texans. And the reason why I'm saying that this was just such a, a positive experience is because I saw one thing. I actually saw that my quarterback is the quarterback of the Jets' future. And if you guys want to chime in on that, go ahead. But I can explain as well why I'm saying this and what I saw that makes me say this. Sure. I'll Listen, I'll jump in there. I mean, I think uh, from my perspective, you know, the, the last two games were about um, probably about five drives, right, um, broken down. The last two drives against Buffalo, and then you had the, the second quarter, 83-yard drive, touchdown, to Robbie Anderson for uh, Sam Darnold. He had a third quarter drive, touchdown pass to Andre Roberts, again from Sam Darnold. Then you had the fourth quarter. Wait, it went to who? Andre what? Andre Roberto. Mm, okay. Roberts. Who Carrie loves. Carrie, Carrie loves. loves. I don't want that guy. He has his jersey on <laughs> underneath his sweatshirt. As a part he of does. my receiving he has his, core. Yeah, he has his jersey on underneath <laughs> no. his sweatshirt. But, but Special you teams, I love him. Yeah, yeah. I love him. All right, and the last drive, the fourth quarter drive, the McGuire touchdown, 73-yard, 13-play drive that put us up with four or five minutes left in the fourth quarter yesterday. Mm -hmm. So when you look at those drives and you look at our young quarterback, three touchdowns, one interception over those two games, this is what gives you the, you know, the feeling that we are headed in the right direction. So for me, those two games were all about those five drives. Right. And and, and my other thing is is that with, with regard to him, I mean, I, I think I sent it in the text chain. It's like, look, guys, we have our quarterback uh, for 15 years. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, and let's, and, and, and let's be I mean? clear. Behind <laughs> an offensive line that we were down two offensive two starters, starters with a line yeah. that we really that, that's really not, you know, um, top 50 percent in the league. Right. In terms of um, efficiency. So, you know, given that, given the fact that he had a clear command of of the offense, he, he had a, a great. Um, ability to extend the play, sure, keep the play alive. Yep, run for a first down. Um, you know, run around to get so that our receivers could get open. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's what you need in a quarterback. And, if you, and these are the things that these yeah. are the things that you're seeing in the first year of his development. Then you know the possibilities are endless right now. Um, and and what it also does is that we're not beholden to draft a quarterback in the first round so we can address all of the other needs that we have to address. And if that means trading down to get more picks, then so be it. Yeah, I think right. we're all on that train. What about you, Kyle? I think that uh, when you look at the articles that were written today all over the place, I was on The Athletic uh, this morning, and what we're saying I think is being echoed by a lot of the other people uh, covering the Jets that the one thing that we don't have to have anxiety about going forward 
is quarterback. We have a dude, whether you think he's the best guy that came out in this draft or not. I know a lot of people are having that Baker, Donald. Mayfield looks good. Mayfield looks good. I can't find him. Looks good. Looks real good. Mayfield looks really, really good. He does. Yeah. They might make the playoffs too. And, uh, I Crazy. think that's interesting. They fired Hugh Jackson in the middle of the season, and they might make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're, that's, their coach has I, more more wins than um, the prior coach in just this span of time that he was he was fired. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I think Hugh Jackson was kind of uh, destined for where he was going, kind of like Todd Bowles is. But the uh, the thing with with Darnold is that he's he's doing things with his feet. Um, he has such a strong arm. He throws flat-footed and with his whole body facing forward a lot of times where he can just umph these throws yeah. um, that only a, a strong-arm guy can do. Uh, that Andre Roberts ball was Pretty. like perfectly. Pretty. Like, like it could have been Andre Roberts. It could have been JoJo Natson. It could have been, you know, whatever. Brandon Phillips? Receiver. I, I don't think Brandon would have caught that. Though. I got hands, baby. I don't I, think he would have caught I that. Got, I had the best <laughs> hands on the team. Were you on the hands team and kick off? I should have been on the hands team, but I, listen, uh, I catch everything. He was on the no hands team. Please, baby, please. <laughs> can you He's catch a cold? Yes, I can. I got the, the <laughs> sniffles <laughs> right now. Huh? What was that? We, we used to do some running workouts when we threw the shot put, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you remember that. You remember that. Yeah. But listen, I I should have been at least the goal line tight end. You know, not not even goal line, red zone tight end. Give Terrible. me a little Terrible. little space to kind of, <laughs> you know, touchdown <laughs> on the play by number seventy seven, Brandon Phillips. He said, <laughs> "That's me cutting on you, Kerry." <laughs> Kerry blowing out his ACL trying to cover the kid. <laughs> ah! Yeah, uh-huh. non contact injury. <laughs> yeah, you know that. So <laughs> before these guys try to get on my case, because you see them like revving up for it, right? Mm-hmm. You see it, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically. I wanted to give you guys the freedom to talk about um, and, and, and to basically help me illustrate my point of view. My point is the fact that all the points that all of you made, even in a losing situation with mm-hmm. the Titans and stuff, I see that we have a foundational centerpiece for our franchise in Sam Darnold. We have a terrible O-line. This kid is still making throws. He's still making plays. He's still advancing first downs he's still driving down the field um uh, uh, uh he's making good throws you see that tight spiral you, you guys are talking about uh him uh making moves with his feet you guys are talking about the ball that he throws you know i want to talk about his resiliency I'm, i want to talk about how he's also reading a collapsed pocket and reading the defense still by scrambling absolutely. left and right absolutely and he was doing that at first because all defenses are kind of playing more vanilla style. And then when they really get into the meat of their season, it got a little tough for him. He got hurt. And then he was able to sit back, take some coaching yeah. from, from uh, as Kyle says it, our assistant coach and quarterbacks coach and also backup quarterback. You know, um, <laughs> McCown, he's making in, enough in, to, in, be in off, to have all of those roles. He's well, you know, enough. he's earning his money. Yeah, sure. You he know, earned no his doubt. $6 million no for doubt. sure. No Go get I'm, that. I'm totally cool with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll pay him a million dollars next year to do it if he wants to. In fantasy money, though. <laughs> in, in Bitcoin. In big in Bitcoin. <laughs> Bankrupt. Anyway. So basically, and, and the thing is, we fought. We It was a hard fought game. I think that we did really well. And I think that Sam Darnold did everything that he could do to basically allow us and put us in a space to potentially win this game. But we don't have the talent. But where we do have the talent is this quarterback. Right. So now what we have to do, right, is get him in the best position to be able to succeed. And just like what Kerry and I keep talking about, get that old line straightened out. Do you see how many adjustments he had to make? How many times he had to scramble out of the pocket to make something happen? How many reads he had to make under duress and not in the pocket anymore? I just want to be able to see him read a defense while being somewhat comfortable in the pocket. Somewhat so comfortable. My, my question for you, though, is um, what's more important? And we're going to talk about the draft in the future as well. But is it O-line or is it the weapons? Uh, I so, so I mean, when, when you look at that game, the O-line didn't hamper him. It was either two or three sacks. Obviously, he escaped the pocket in, in a number of situations in order to prevent a couple of sacks too. But the reason why we lost the game, when you have Robbie Anderson, it was a drop pass, fourth down, 14 yards to go, 
20 yard pass in the air, two hands on it, ricochets right off. So yeah. if you if you're talking about the opportunity to the wins and losses at this point in in the game, I think it's really got to be the weapons. We really have to to stockpile weapons and the opportunities. He has absolutely nobody to throw to. Um, he has nobody to run the ball. You know, so we just really have to to stress that. I'm not saying that we don't need you. to focus on O line, but if you know if it's a first first round draft pick and it's an opportunity yeah. to get a, a stud, somebody that's going to be a home run threat versus an O lineman, I think I want the home run threat. I'll tell you what, they'll be. I think to have a great quarterback or to be considered a great quarterback, you can make marginal players, average players, or even just good players look better than what they are. And I'm not saying that this kid is Tom Brady. Maybe Tom Brady is the wrong example because he's probably the best quarterback of all time. Sure. But we've seen him, like, do extremely well and win Super Bowls with guys that aren't that great. What's that receiver? Troy Brown, I think his name was. That's a lot of pressure to put on the kid, Aaron, though. Aaron, uh, who I, know, could, you know. I know. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, they do that, too. Exactly. Like, and they, These guys that, like, were not even on your fantasy radar – are all of a sudden they're 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 relevant. But look um, who we're who we're comparing it to. You're talking about Hall of Famers. Diego. You know what uh, I'm saying? You, you're, but you're talking about Hall of Famers. I mean, the, uh, second year. Do we want to put a Hall of Fame type resume and requirement on our franchise quarterback at that point in time? I put. I don't I, think I'm, so. I'm only I'm only pointing out the fact that when you have a good quarterback, let's even say a great quarterback, that quarterback has the ability to bring out the best in the roster um, by where he puts the ball and how he operates. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that we're necessarily putting the Montana uh, or uh, Tom Brady stamp yeah. on him. I'm just, I'm just saying that I, I think that I agree with Brandon that he is going to be able to – if he's going to make an Andre Roberts look good as a receiver – which is not Andre Roberts' forte. He's a kick returner. Right. That's kind of where he peaks at. Um, then we're, <laughs> we're, do, we're dealing I'm with peaking. a special guy. He's no, peaking. no, I, but I get that. So the difference, and you brought up Andre Roberts. So here's the difference, right, during that game. Every time every time uh, anyone says Andre Roberts, I'm Kerry, cutting, I'm cutting to makes Kerry's that face, shot. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah, cutting to yeah, Kerry's yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so the difference between that is you had a perfect pass, touchdown reception, by him, right? Andre Roberts. Great, great play. That was Donald. And he put it there. Now, he also put it there for one of it was like a 15 yard out. It was going to go for a first down, clanked off of Andre Roberts' hands. And that's probably when you chimed in and said, I don't want this dude as a wide receiver. Right. So for me, the difference is that the offensive line held up in both scenarios enough for the pass to go. But the difference is we didn't have somebody to catch the ball. Right, no, so you're right. I hear you. I mean, so, but here's yeah. here's the thing. This is what he's I not want. That good. Right. This is what I <laughs> he's want. He's not. But I mean, but that's no. what I'm talking about. This is what I want to point out. Look, it, there's there's a there's a balance that you have to strike when you when you have a quarterback that you want to develop. You want to protect him. So you so you want to protect and develop, right? So the idea is protect him first, and then develop him as a as a quarterback. You, in order to protect him, you have to draft and and have in place a offensive line that is going to do exactly that, and that will give him an opportunity to develop those other offensive weapons that you put around him eventually. Now, I'm not saying you you in a, in a situ, in a scenario where you can have both, then you you do both. But in a scenario where you want to place more importance at the early in the early part of his um, tenure here, I would say let's protect this guy first. And and what I and the example that I would give is Andrew Luck, when they were when they drafted this quarterback and mm. did not provide him with a line when he was sitting when he was laying on his back, you know, his, the first five years of his career. You know what I'm saying? You're still winning with games. his neck with his neck broken. With, with his neck broken. But so that was I, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. Right, but you know, Sheesh. so that I'm, if I'm going to place more, if I'm going to place went a to level, the vertebrae, huh? Right. If I'm and if, if I'm going to do something where I'm going to rank, you know, how I want to get my quarterback from where he is day one to where I want him to be as a champion, then I'm going to put place more importance on, in, on protecting him and then putting those offensive weapons in front of him so that he can develop. He can make those, those throws to uh, receivers that may, he may, he makes them look like they are ones 
when they are yeah. threes. He makes an Andre Roberts. All, all he had to do is open his hands and catch the ball in the end zone. Yeah. Okay. When he makes, when he has to make a difficult catch, you see what happens, right? Let me, let me throw this in there. What I am totally convinced of with our quarterback is that he is going to do everything he can do possible to be great. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's going to take a lot of people with him on that on journey. The way, on the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, so the, it's imperative for us to keep him upright, to put the people around him on the offensive line. I mean, like if we can get a new center and, or, or, you know, somebody along with Harrison and keep long at guard. Yeah. yeah. He he's he's playing on. well That's right now. Saying. I'd like to see what his, yeah. I'd like to see what pro, pro pro football focus stats are on Spencer long as a guard since he has been put in a position. He looked a lot better. I've been saying yeah. this for like the past, I think four weeks now about how much better he looks at that. He looks as a guard. And now. our center looks good. And our, our center, center looks, looks good. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. Let me just say one thing because maybe I used, and I even prefaced it by saying, you know, Tom Brady, um, maybe I shouldn't use him. But how about this? A quarterback that's making a team uh, with borderline marginal weapons better, Baker Mayfield. Okay? Baker Mayfield, he doesn't have Josh Gordon anymore. Okay? Who's he throwing the ball to? I I, I can't even tell you who their names are, but Baker Mayfield. Landry. Uh, well, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis right. Landry. Okay, that that's one of them. But yeah. but you know what? Juku. But you know what? And Juku. And, All right. And, and they're and they're a rookie wide receiver. And I, I forgot to forget exactly. his name. You forgot his name. But you know, Florida. Landry's not really hitting all that on, on all that this season. That's because he's spreading you know it saying? around right now. I mean, because he has other exactly. options. He doesn't have to force the ball to Landry. Right. Well, he doesn't have like. But 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 Landry Landry demands attention. You can't yeah. just leave the kid alone. Right. That so, is true. Yeah. So from that perspective, that is true. So, but but what I'm saying is we don't have the, the and a running back. My, I'm, I didn't, don't mean to step on you. No, no. But Chubb, right. second round pick, guys, um, looks I pretty would rather darn have their good. offensive weapons than ours. As right oh, now, okay. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. But it's not like and we have. Line. It's not like we have the offensive weapons of like the Vikings, and Cousins isn't playing that well. Why? He's oh. got the offensive weapons, oh. but he doesn't have the line. So I totally oh, well, agree with Kerry. We, we, we can go off of the tangent on that one. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Sam Donald versus so, Kirk Cousins. But you know, so mm-hmm. you, And we're going to hit that up, too. Mm-hmm. But my point is, I see Baker Mayfield, okay, mm-hmm. um, basically making his team better with his presence and his, and his play. And I think that that is a good example of what Donald can be with a better line. I would say that uh, the Browns' offensive line is better than ours. It and, is, and 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 then and, and, and okay. weapons, right? Okay, so then he, they they've got better weapons, alrighty. Mm-hmm. But they're not like all of them are like Pro Bowl caliber weapons. No, all right, but, okay. Uh, but again, it, it, you're talking about level of importance and how different our what we have is compared to what they have on the offensive side. My overall then, point was just pointing out how Baker Mayfield by himself mm-hmm. as a quarterback I don't, I don't think it's by makes his team. No, I don't think it's by himself. So, so, so by hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 hold on. No, 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 Can I give you something, though? No, no, no. And then you can go. No, 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 All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let me just finish this off. Go ahead. I'm not saying that he alone makes them good, but he alone, his presence has made them better. Not the best, but better. I would agree. If you get rid of Baker Mayfield, they're going to get worse. It, okay, put, 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 put who in his place. Go ahead, B. I'll let Kyle go. Go ahead. Um, I just pulled up the, the, the stats because I was interested in it while you guys were talking about this. And a big thing that we talked about before the draft was completion percentage. Accuracy. And uh, we, we, we dogged Josh Allen for it. He's currently at 52% completion percentage, which is even less than – what he was. What he was. It's right. worth the dogging. Then it's worth the dogging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but he's but, but rushing. But 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 coincidentally, Sam Donald's only at fifty six. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, when you look at Baker Mayfield, who was the seventy percent guy in college, he's completing passes at sixty four percent in the NFL. Um, at and he has more attempts than both Josh Allen and Sam Donald. So. Um, you could just make an argument right there based on that stat that this guy is doing more for his team immediately than um, than the other two. And you can argue that 
they all but, but I, I would say you're right when you say the Browns have Jarvis Landry. So that's a they fair have, point. Yeah, they, they have, have they Antonio have one receiver. Yeah. And Callaway. Antonio Callaway, who I would probably take over anybody else on our team right now as well as a, as a rookie. I mean, and we'll, and we'll look up the stats, but uh-huh, what, what I was going to tell you before, yeah, and I yeah. looked up pro football focus after week 10 because they don't have it current, but the offensive line ranks, mm-hmm. Cleveland ranks number seven in the league for offensive line ranks. Um, Dallas is number six and New England is number eight, and we are 24th in the league okay. right now, um, just as far as the, the ranks are concerned. So, And, um, and, but, and, didn't, and didn't Joe Thomas retire this year? And yes, he, he was did. Like, like he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and he's not even playing on that O line. Correct. So. And then number seven, you're saying, right? There number seven, seven, seven in the league, yeah. and and that's so, why Kerry and I, like, I, he, he and I are in total agreement about building that O line and creating that that atmosphere for our quarterback to truly develop. I mean, put it to you this way: I think if Donald was on the Browns with that O line, he'd be playing on par with Baker Mayfield. I don't know about that. I don't think so. I think he. I think they. I think we. He'd be playing more. He'd be more improved. I would say that. I think the other thing is that we need to point out is that Baker Mayfield has been playing quarterback for his entire life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Darnold has only been playing since you know second year in high school. Um, he was a, he was a, a linebacker, so he's still learning the position. Sure, you know that's the point that I'm making. And yeah. it, and that said, he is still a good quarterback. I I I love his moxie. I love how he just, you know, the first pass in the, in the league was an interception pick six, and this guy has come, in, has come back from that, you know, and to play with confidence. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with the pick, guys. I'm, I'm smiling right, Me right too. now. I mean, I'm, Me I'm, I'm, I'm Chad Pennington in love right now. CP. B- you know I mean? Baker May- Mayfield and Pat Mahomes have a swagger that these other guys don't have. Mm-hmm. Right. That's true. That, right. And that's, that's a personality thing. Mm-hmm. Um, our, our QB – I'm very. I agree with you, Kerry. I'm very pleased with it. He's more Phil Sims than yes. he is. Yes. Um, you, you, than than, you than he is Brett Favre. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. yeah. You hit the nail on the so, head. So, yeah. and that's what we're gonna get, and hopefully we get that high level of play. Mm. That um, you know, or, and you know, leadership. even like a guy like Phil Rivers. Phil Rivers. I don't know if you, any of you guys saw the the clip of him talking to NC State um, that has been floating around this week. I'll send it to you. All right. But um. Phil, Phil Rivers gets fired up, sure. And watching him play in person against the Seahawks earlier this year, like that guy, when he's gone, we are going to miss him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's very underappreciated, um, much better than Eli Manning, in my opinion, much mm-hmm. better. Yeah, he is. Not, the Giants would have been much better off with Phil Rivers than Eli Manning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just throwing that out there, throwing yep. that con- two Super Bowl wow. wins to none. Glad we're not Giants fans. Two Super you know Bowl wins to none. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe I'm, you would have had I'm three. Of a Giant fan. <laughs> Maybe none I like Philip right now. I wow. I just think where there's a disconnect in our uh, philosophy. Brian thinks that it's more of a weapons thing, which I do agree with. It, it, it's highly important. But I think of protecting your franchise quarterback that's going to be around for how many years, Kerry? 15. There you go. 15 <laughs> years. There you go. I think uh, that is of higher priority, keeping him and his mental in a safe place, you know, and I think we're we're splitting hairs a lot of it. Yeah, we you know, probably right now. Are. So it's, it's like one versus one A. It's like, do you want to draft in the first round or the second round? Well, I want to go in the first <laughs> round. They want to do in the second round. I mean, you know, so it's not like we're nobody's we're, making that face when they're asking those questions. That you me. you just did. <laughs> I made wait wait. I you did just, this. The camera wasn't on you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm totally with with Kerry to, to trade down if it isn't um, Quentin Nelson that's sitting there. You know, like somebody that's like Jonah know, Williams. Or whoever it's going to be. If it's going to be like the guy they're saying is going to be a Hall of Famer or something like that, then maybe, you know, maybe we get we get up in there. But otherwise, trade back. We'll, we'll get a good – as long as it's an old lineman and a wide receiver that are getting picked in the first two picks. Yeah. Um, whoever our GM is. I just think it's that the problem is, is our GM, and we talk about it a lot. So – probably one of the reasons why you want to trade back is because you don't trust the person that's going to make the pick if McCagnan ends up staying. So you need as many opportunities to get it right as possible. Yeah. Um, and, so, and we don't have a second round pick. That That's right. the issue for me. That's the issue right now. Right. We don't have a second round pick. Right. Yeah. So Love to get that true. second round pick back. That's And that's why I say yeah. let's trade back. But what I would also say, you know, I did make the point of, you know, the Andrew Luck situation, but who's the first car brother? David Carr. Right. 
he, same situation. This yeah. guy was shell shocked from the time that he got in the league until the time that he would no longer throw another pass in the league yep. because he could not stay upright. Yep. And he had expansion he was team talented. too. Though. I, expansion I, rec- team. I recognize that, but again, he was drawing from his from his backside. Yeah, I I'm, I'm with Kerry, and that doesn't happen that much. That doesn't happen that much, but I'm totally with Kerry. <laughs> kind of, sort of. I don't want to get. I don't want to give him all, all that. Right. But I see you, you son. <laughs> I see you, son. Right. Take him out. Take him I out. I see you. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. <laughs> this whole experience of watching this game was was edifying for me personally, and I'm going to sell you guys on another thing. Words okay? of power word edifying. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you like that, right? I gave you one of them hundred dollar words. Edification. Spell it. Edification. Spell it. Edification. All right, there we go. <laughs> That's definitely heavy worded right there. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> Kyle McKenna, won't let me he won't heavy let me lift worded. that one down. <laughs> I got you there. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but um heavy worded. basically, um, I even wrote it in my notes here. Yeah. The Jets defense is better than their record shows. Garbage. You disagree. Garbage. You disagree. Absolutely. Go ahead. Talk I, to me I about think, it. I then. think the last two games our our defense gave it away for us. You know. Overall, um, how did we play? I mean, we're playing uh, Tremaine like, Johnson. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I, I don't like him in it anyway. Right. Well, but they wanna, were average we, defense. I, I think, think we're we're, we're, we're probably a below average defense. Right. We and are. Saying be, and it's saying better than our record indicates. That's what I said. I never said <laughs> wow. they were great, <laughs> but I, I I think I think that they are. I think the Jets' defense is an average defense. I think we have good pieces. Yeah. Right. I think we have a top position player at safety in Jamal Adams and yep. um. You know, we could have drafted somebody else at that position. Uh, I mean, at, at at number six that year, and you know, you know who I'm talking about. But I think I'm still happy. I'm still satisfied with the pick. I'm gonna say happy. I'm still satisfied with the pick. He's our quarterback. He's the our quarterback is, on defense. Yeah. The yeah, question is yeah. Len- Leonard Williams right now, and whether or not we're going to, um, you know, try to re-sign that mm-hmm. kid because we were not seeing the production out of him. No. Um, we, we don't have the pass rush when we need it. Mm-mm. We had like six sacks yesterday. Anderson. But but on I the like drive it. that we needed to get it, we couldn't. Uh, our cornerbacks couldn't cover when we needed them to cover no. when the the game was on the line. So listen, we had the lead. Sam Donald did his job. He did his job. Yeah. With four or five minutes left, right. giving us the lead, handed over to defense, and the defense squandered that. Right. You know, so that that's really where we are as far as our defense is concerned. Again, nice pieces. Jamal Adams, love him. Um, Jenkins, Jordan Jenkins off the edge or whatever mm-hmm. else. He's coming into his own, yeah. definitely. But we don't have that closer. We don't have Devon Miller, somebody who's going to come off the edge when we need him to mm-hmm. in order to step up and close the game out. We just don't have that. Mm-hmm. So then l- let me ask you a question. Do you think uh, that the Jets – just looking at the whole season thus far, that their defense has let us down more than, say, the offense has let us down? No. I wouldn't no. say that. I would just say in the last couple of games, we the, the offense has played better than the defense. And then in the last two games? Yeah. Okay. That's a fair point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that we played bad yesterday as far as defensively. And then if you I look think at they let the us score. Down. I think the defense let us down in terms of being able to win this game. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they played a, a pretty good first three quarters, and then you know it kind of got away from us, and that's the thing. That's like the 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 running theme of our of our Jets experience here in this season. And the thing is, when you don't have a good offense, that will tend to happen because how much longer can the defense can hold them withstand? Down. Yeah, right. I mean, but you know? we we've we've given numerous um, examples of of how our offense has let us down oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the beginning quarter or the beginning third of this year yeah. where the defense is just tired from yeah. being on the field. So, you know, we have to be able, as a, as a team that, is a, has, that has a winning tradition over years, we have to be able to put it together more often than not together. If we had a better offense, I think it would result in our defense being better, specifically yeah, I, for I what you were saying about them being tired and right. taxed out right. and things like that. So that's why I think – that it's more on the offense. It's more on the offense, definitely. Yeah. One and two, that our defense is better than our record indicates. And I'm not saying that they're even good because we have a below uh, average uh, 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 record. You know, what, what do you think our team ten? is better than our record indicates? No, no. I think our yeah. defense is better than our record indicates, and I think our offense is horrific. I just I think... was looking. I, I was looking at the um, you know, the the scoreboard yesterday where it says nine and four for the Texans and four and nine 
for the Jets. And it got me thinking, like, how many of these games were, you know, how far were we away from nine and four as opposed to right. the record that we have? And I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't think of five games, but that we were I can in. think of of three, you know, where it could have gone either way. Mm. Like, like the way we we Titans, we, the Titans, the the first Bills game, Miami. I, I, did we, no, we the first Miami, Miami game. twice? Yeah, yeah, two games against Miami. Yeah, right. I mean, That's four. So, where where the defense played well and the offense couldn't put points on the board and just kept on giving yeah. it back. Or well enough. Well, scoring touchdowns instead of field goals. Yeah. You know, or well, our, or our, playing our, our in the first kicker, quarter. Or playing in the first quarter. Both oh, yeah. Miami yeah. Game. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, the kicker, kicker was horrible. You know, two PATs missed. You That's know, bad. we, we could have kicked a field goal instead of going uh, or needing a touchdown at that point in time. Uh, and yeah. also from the first quarter, I hate coming out. And the first time we get the ball, we always run on first down every single play <laughs> of every single game. You couldn't be more right. Can, can we do something different? Just 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 for once. Just do something different. Something creative. Something that's going to catch more action. Play actions if you run it so daggone much right. on first down. You know, like talk about tendencies and just, hey, I, I know that's my tendency, but that's what I do. I'm just going to keep doing it. Like, Dude, come on. He ran, he, he ran a draw on, on, on third and 12 yesterday, too, which was a very Paul Hackett thing to do. Um, yeah, talk about the Jeremy Bates. Let's talk about the yeah. Jeremy Bates issues. Uh, <laughs> the Jeremy Bates, like the Ohio State. Funny. Right. Talk- he, he won't be an issue for long, man, because, you know, Bowles is going, Bates is going to be going after yeah. that. Who do we want to replace that that tandem? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> we, we were talking talk about, about this it? before. He, he did some things personnel-wise that were cool yesterday, so I'm going to give him some props for that. Yeah, he played. He, he called a decent game yesterday. He did some things with the three tight end sets and the the awful announcers that we had yesterday. Nate Burleson, <laughs> please do not ever go near a jet team again. Wow. Uh, Kyle he texted us. He's yeah. like, I want to fight him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, you might. Okay. Different He's just network. too cheesy Different for me. Network. That whole good morning football vibe, it's like, you know, it has nothing, you know, it has nothing on the get up, I'll tell you that. Oh, look at that. Woo, yeah. Go get up, uh, baby. Plug, I have plug, to throw baby. that in there. That's right. Yeah, um, man. But cheesy Nate Burleson was, um, you know, pointing out the little things, talking about youth football and stuff like that. Um, but the one thing that they did bring up that was cool was that the three tight end sets um, were interesting. They were going with one wide receiver, one running back, and, and, and three tight ends. And what they didn't say, which they should have, was that messes up a defense because the defense is – will change personnel based on your personnel groupings. So they will wait to see if you come in with that Dozier at fullback or right, right. that three tight end set. So if you have those tight ends, like Leggett is starting to become, and Herndon is, um, where they, they create matchup problems with the defense's personnel based on that, that was that was kind of interesting. And they did they didn't always – run out of it. They didn't always pass out of it. Um, they did some play action with it. I like that. But otherwise, um, there was a lot of run on first down, run on second down, yeah. draw on third down, mm-hmm. or, you know, run, run, pass. If you if you just – I understand trying to establish a run, but if you just do that, you're, you're going to be very predictable and uh, very easy to deal with. I yeah. just – I saw a, a Chicago play earlier today when I was watching their, their game, and Trubisky – was in shotgun. Um, they had a guy come over and they faked the reverse. They faked a a screen to the left and then threw back a screen to the right. Just in one place, sitting down and watching that. You know, it's it's that's something that you see out of Nagy, Nagy. all the time. Yeah. Uh, his his creativeness on the offensive side of the ball, and I just don't see that at all. I just we ran everything between the tackles. I don't even think we ran a sweep the whole game, like trying to get. And the two guys that we have aren't between the tackle running backs. They're get them on the edge, get them in space, and try to see if, if they can, you know, break something. And everything we ran was between the two guards. I just wow. don't understand what, what we're doing from a, a running perspective at all. That's a great segue because part of the positives that I had as far as edification, right? Ooh, we use that <laughs> word again. I had here um, uh, that uh, – well, I already spoke about the Jets' defense better than record indicates. We just spoke about that. But um, Herndon, 
being our future at tight end. I think we can all agree on that. Absolutely. And then look at Kerry's face. Mm -hmm. And then Maguire. Mm -hmm. I think Maguire could be a starting running back for us. I'm not saying he's going to be Le'Veon Bell or anything, but I I do think that he could be something for us as a starter as long as we get that O-line fixed. So I don't want to hate on him because I I think he's a he's a nice player, but he's not Le'Veon Bell. I never said that. No, no, no. But I don't even think he's. I never said that. that. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. (laughs) I never said that. Running back by committee, running back. Right. Pair him up with somebody. Right. If you got a a Legarrette Blunt and Elijah McGuire, that might be right. That's a formidable. Yeah, combo right. Can there. can he start in this league? Uh, yeah, he can. He can start in this league. Is he going to start in this league for a a playoff team that has other weapons besides him that are you know, you know, two number one receivers and a high level um, tight end? Maybe, maybe. But you know, if you have him as your as your number one option or your number two option. Then the answer is probably no. I get you, no. but but he he is but he is a change of pace back that yeah. a good team really needs, and that's fine. Well, you know what? I'll put it to you this way: he could be our next Bilal Powell. I think he's got that. He's got I good think hands. so. I I totally agree. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah, is he is he a Tariq Cohen? No, he's not no. a co- no, not right. at all. So, so I I think that he's not even from a change of pace standpoint, not even like a. No, I can't even say phenomenal because obviously there's only a top tier of those. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah. I, I just don't think – I think he's a backup. Right now in today's NFL, he's a backup, and that's where he has been on the depth chart um, of our team right okay. now. So so when you say backup, he could be a number two back, right? He could be, he could be a two or three. I think he's better than a three. I think I he could be a I two. I think he's totally better than a three. I mm-hmm. think he's Bilal Powell, a I, new wave. Me, Bilal Powell. Let me, let me throw something out there too, like – I don't know. This just kind of came to me. But if we're talking about NFL teams as like stock cars, like we're all given the same salary cap, we're all given uh, a 53 man roster. And it really comes down to the player personnel person and the coach and how they're going to lay that out there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at our roster right now as compared to something like the chiefs on offense. <laughs> Waste of time. The reason, the reason why we're putting, <laughs> well, the reason why we're putting uh Demont Dozier at fullback, is because we don't have anyone who can really block from the tight end position or the fullback position on our team right now. Brian's favorite and, player, Tomlinson, can block, right, B? Oh, well, boy. Get him <laughs> Let him go. Well, oh, God. I mean, oh, my gosh. You, you, you look at those three tight ends, and the reason why you go with that three tight end look is because they're all pass catchers. They're not blockers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, maybe Herndon will become one or something like that. But then you look at us compared to other teams, and – we have to carry all these backs and all these tight ends, and we don't get to have any of those guys that do those other things, whereas a team like Kansas City has a slot that they could run the ball with on jet sweeps, that they could shovel pass to, that they can do all these things with. And when you bring this back to Elijah McGuire and Bilal Powell, is that you know if you're going to have guys that can do multiple things um, – they allow you to put more guys on your roster that can do other things. And we are just so limited in that. You know, the fact that we have to take a backup lineman and put him at fullback. He was in the game 10 times yesterday on mm, offense Yep, at fullback. Yep. And he had um, like two two or three penalties. He Holy held that. Penalties. He held Jadavian J- Clowney. He oh hugged gosh, him one time. Just, uh, <laughs> it was affectionate. And to, just to, and and to go back to Elijah McGuire. So against Buffalo, seventeen for seventeen rushes, sixty yards for three point five yard average. And yesterday, um, eighteen touches for forty two yards for a two point three yard average. Again, yeah, yep. behind the line, behind a terrible behind line, a, a line that again where the our starting tackle went down. Yeah, starting right tackle, uh, right. shell. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and and we're already down a starting left, but guard. you know, it, it, it's but, football, and so I I, I yeah. get it. Kansas City, you know, their their offensive line is thirteenth. You know, it's not like they're you know Chicago's is fifteenth. Yeah, we're twenty third. They're in the top. I mean, third. Well, well, let's let's keep going. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Seattle is twentieth. <laughs> okay. Seattle's twentieth. Can they run the ball? You know, no. somewhat. <laughs> um, so after us, you have uh, Houston Giants. Texans Seattle's is twenty seventh. Houston Texans twenty seventh, and and Los Angeles Chargers a twenty eighth. 
In and Minnesota's 29th. In no, no, no. This is, this is offensive line ranking. Ranking. Period. So, often, okay. you know, that's, that's... After week 10? Uh, this was up to week 10. Up to week 10. Up what to are week we 10. in week, what week, are we Brian, in? week 15? I, right. How many touches did Ter- did uh, Cannon have? Cannon. Oh, he had a he had a ton. He, he must had have had 15 mm-hmm. touches. He was on the, he was on the field at, at times more than McGuire was. He doesn't hit there the whole There was one drive where he touched the ball four times in a row. He doesn't hit the whole Yeah, he had um No, he doesn't. I'll look it up for you. Yeah. All right, so I'd be interested to know if 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 Elijah McGuire had 18 touches. The fact that he got the ball on on fourth down on that on that call where they should have um yeah. t- challenged yeah. tells you tells you the whole scenario. And and you know what? We were just talking about the positives of 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 our process or my process that I put out there as far as being educated um on where the Jets are. Now we're going to get to the negative part of the edification. And uh the first thing is you were just talking about the challenge carry. What about Todd Bowles? Not a good move, you know, as far as not challenging. And also, there's a history there of him just not being a good game coach. And I think this is uh, exhibit A of not challenging. And I think it's he just did a poor job, and he, he's he's always doing a poor job. I think his biggest contribution is his defensive scheme, his defensive philosophy, and putting out a pretty decent defense halfway decent defense without the players to be able to really maximize the efficiency of his defense. But that's it because he is not offensive minded and he's a terrible game day coach. If you're a defensive minded coach and you have a, for you have for several years, you've had a, you know, uh, below average defense, then what are you here for? <laughs> well, you know, McCagan didn't give him, I'm, you know, I'm just putting. I'm really asking a question. With. I mean, you're just asking a question. Then what are you here for? Well, you're yeah. not game managing well, right? Okay, you're not. You're not calling plays anymore. Yeah, right. So what are you doing? Goodbye. What is your value? Packing your bags or, in this organization. You're, you're, you're packing your bags. You're packing right? your bags. That's that's what you're here yeah. for now. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, and goodbye. Yeah. And Cannon had well, seven carries yesterday. At FYI. That's it. Seven. I mean, he got the ball thrown to him a bunch of times too. Targets. Though. So he's definitely around. Yeah, like, but I, I was more I think he had about like five I was more about the rushing. I was more about the rushing yeah. part of it, and I, that surprises me. Seven carries for 13 yards. How many right. catches? Uh, so McGuire had three catches. Cannon had three catches. That's gotcha. it. That's I feel it. Like this guy was all over the place. Oh, you know, he's on special teams, too. Maybe that's where I saw him, too. He had that oh, nice tackle. He had good tackles. The, nice penalties, good coverage. the penalties don't count. After the drop pass, he had sure. that that <laughs> special teams tackle. Yeah, he did. Um, and <laughs> Underhanded. Yesterday's, Body blow. Yesterday's, <laughs> yesterday's fourth down challenge, he even got saved by Bill O'Brien, who called a timeout. He did. Yes. He said at Marinade. Yes. Still, and he still didn't do it. Again, I think his um, he wanted to hold it for the for the – if he if he did not get the call for the he was going to uh, win the challenge. I, I I agree with you. I'm just telling you what I think. What his, what his and we were driving. Was. Like how many opportunities do we have to drive? Again, and that was good. Yeah, I agree with you. Every I agree with you. Angle. You're trying to make excuses. Every just let it go. Like it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> let it go. Every single angle of the replay showed that the guy did not go down. Yeah, every single one. It wasn't even disputable. No. And he has like, more time to look at it than us because when they cut to commercial, he's still looking at it. You know, is so, he looking at it or is he just looking in the air? Like he's just looking in the air with no it. expression what like this. He's like, for dinner tonight? what am I going to do on vacation after I get let go? I'm going to have some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have some mashed potatoes and gravy. He got the same look on his face the entire time in the game. Whether we're losing, whether we're winning, whether it's fourth down. <laughs> uh oh. Hey. <laughs> She's, hey, she's done. She's, she's done. done. <laughs> she made her appearance. Right. She heard us talking about bowls. And she oh, came. yeah. She's like, she's yeah. Defending bowls. <laughs> like Look I'm at done. the defending bowls. I'm done. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking about him not calling offense, not calling plays on defense. Like, what is he useful for? And he's really not. So I think he just has to go. And then, well, let's talk about the offensive coordinator. We were just criticizing him. Jeremy Bates. Yeah, just criticizing Bates about how not creative he is. Um, running on first down. Uh, in the past, I was like, when are we going to put these guys in motion just to kind of see if the defense is in the zone or in a man or just trying to get some kind of trick play or some creative play just to kind of mix it up a little bit. 
and I just don't see it. We're always in a single back or just no backs, exposing our quarterback that is playing behind an, an O-line that just isn't good and putting him at risk. So, um, you know, uh, Jeremy Bates has to go as well. He's got to go. I mean, yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a house cleaning. Yeah. It's yeah. Gonna, we're not going to have a single coach. Um, maybe the special teams coach, um, he stays depending on who gets the job and their relationship or something like that. But I don't see a, I don't see a Casey Rogers saying, I don't see – it's going to be a new regime and it's going to be somebody who's making their own decision. Yeah. yeah. I mean, me, I, I would go Mike McCarthy, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, 125 wins, 77 losses. Um, eight out of 13, he had 10-plus wins in a season. He develops he, quarterbacks. He develops quarterbacks. Uh, he, you know, he, he knows be, how to run a program. He knows how to run a program. Yeah. You yeah. know, you know, he's got experience as a head coach. Um, you know, for for better or for worse, he's got a Super Bowl ring under his belt. Uh, has the cachet there. I think that's the guy, in, in my opinion. My problem is with this: if you bring him in, who is what is the what is the level of succession? Is it McCags and um, and McCarthy in terms of making decisions? His personnel decisions, or is or is you know McCarthy is 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 he making the decisions with regard to who he plays? Well, and he question. puts on the field. If you're gonna have a, a McCarthy and a McCagnan, you should throw a McKenna in there just to round <laughs> <Get> it, <laughs> just round it out. <laughs> Me, well, per- personally, I think, that, I think this was this, I think that was part of the problem with Bowles and McCagnan being on the same level. Sure, um, I think that's part of the issue. And when you bring in a McCarthy. Does he? I mean, does he want to be in that kind of situation? Well, I say, you know, you know me. I think McCaz has to go too, right? But if so, he, so say he stays. Say he stays. You think he wants to, My thing is, that if I'm if I'm the owner and and I say and I'm interview McCarthy and he says to me that McCagnan has to go and we got to bring in somebody else as to be the GM, I'm saying okay, yes, okay. So that, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. But is that going to happen? Is that going to occur? I mean, I, we obviously we don't all know, but it mm. sounds like McCadden is going to stay. Um, but if you're talking about purely who should be the next head coach, that's my and who's going to hire the head coach? Is McCadden going to hire the head coach? He's well, the GM. I mean, I mean I he's going to have something to do with it. He's going to have some say. But I mean, at the end of the day, is he going to be charged with that? With I think that he job? is because I think the New York Jets owners are a little bit more hands off. Than- Does McCadden have a vote of confidence from the owners right now? No. I don't think anybody is. I don't think he's, they said anything. But everybody, yeah. well, the news outlets are saying that McCagnan is going to stay and he's going to choose the next head coach. Yeah. Mm. Well, for me, I would love, I would love to see Lewis Riddick or Daniel Jeremiah, yes. just like we were talking about on yeah. the yeah. GM chat. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Lewis Riddick and, and McCartney in there, McCarthy. McCarthy in there. I mean, I think that would be Dan, great. D- and you bring or in Daniel Jeremiah. He worked at the Eagles, so. He probably has a relationship with uh, D. Filippo. Uh, you might be able to get Jeremiah McCarthy and D. Filippo in the same as a package. In the same package, yeah. Um, Would you want you know, D. Filippo in as a possible head coach, or going back to his offensive coordinator roots? No, I, I was saying, I was saying as a as an OC. Yeah, like same if here. He came in as an OC and McCarthy. Um, I'm trying to think. Is D. Filippo on the same tree? With um, McCarthy, because Andy Reid is the Holmgren, Mike Holmgren tree, right? And I think that Mike McCarthy's on the Mike Holmgren tree too. So well, since if you I'm mentioned him, now does McCarthy about... have a tree? Uh, I mean, I'm sure he does, yeah. but no one really speaks about yeah, Pat, it. And he was Pat a Sherman. long tenured uh, coach in Green Bay. He's been there long enough to develop his own tree, so to speak. I think the the head coach of the Giants is um, on the Mike McCarthy tree. Okay. Um, Philbin, Philbin, All the right. one that's the interim coach right now. He's on that tree too. He was the coach yeah, of Miami, former coach of, coach of Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Actually. Since you mentioned Andy Reid, I mean, I mean, is anybody considering the enemy? Eric B. Enemy. Now the issue with him I, is I, that I, I don't think he I has enough that. coaching experience for him to be a, a head coach. So the issue is that if he were to say, you know, look, I want to come, but I want to come as the head coach, you know, what, you know, how much consideration would you give to that? I consider him. I would definitely consider him and, and interview him, bring him in, yeah. see what he has to say. 
Uh, I couldn't sit here and say he would be my number one candidate. I would if I'm him. I'm not. I'm not making a lateral move. If I'm leaving, he's he's not even calling the place where he's at. So I mean, you might bring him over and say, "Hey, you're you're the OC, and then mm-hmm. you're going to be calling the plays," which Neither might be a step Nagy, up for him. I was just about to say that Nagy wasn't yeah. calling mm-hmm. the plays as well, and this kid, he's 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 or doing Peterson. his thing over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and he's probably in a better situation, so he might just stay right there. Like, yo, I got Pat, City. I Pat, got Pat Mahomes, Mahomes that I'm years. coaching right now, so why am I going to move uh, well, until I because, get a head coaching position? Because it's a promotion, and you haven't, you don't, you haven't had, you know, experience calling plays. We're going to give you experience calling plays, and we're going to pay you more money, and you're going to be under Michael, um, McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. I mean, again, this is just I'm just throwing out scenarios. You know, sure. What would you do? What would Jesus do? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. I've spoke about this. <laughs> I've spoken about this in the past. Um, I don't think uh, John Harbaugh is going to lose his job anymore, especially if they keep winning like this. Um, but if he does, and let's just say John Harbaugh and, I and you, McCarthy, I disagree with you. I think he's even if he's continuing to win, I think they're going to end up cha- um, getting changing. rid of him. Well, I, you know what? I won't even argue that because mm-hmm. that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. You know, so um, if you have a choice of McCarthy and John Harbaugh, who would you guys take? For me. I like John Harbaugh better than McCarthy because I, I, I feel like McCarthy knows how to lead men. I'm sorry. Harbaugh knows how to lead men even more so than um, than McCarthy. Just mm. FYI. So. Is, he getting fi- is he getting fired or is he going to just be a free agent? I think they're I don't going know. to mutually part ways. Yeah, that's probably what, what it's going to end up being instead of them firing him. But yeah. you got Ozzie Newsom retiring, so it would be yeah. a good opportunity to just clean just house and just start house. over. Yeah. Harbaugh, um, yeah. by the way, is uh, 101 wins, 72 losses, 584 winning percentage. Five out of 11, he's had 10-plus uh, wins. And a Super Bowl win, right? Yeah. Yes, he does. Yep, yeah. one Super Bowl win. Do you have well those numbers McCarthy. on McCarthy? Right. As far uh, as wins to loss ratio? Oh, six, 618 is the winning percentage versus 583. Right. 583 is John Harbaugh. Yep. Copy that. Yep. And one Super right. Bowl win. Yep. One, yep. one as well. Each. Yep. Right. One mm-hmm. Super Bowl win with the best quarterback ever. You guys don't That's have a, not like true. A, a, a Sean McVay clone that mm-hmm. you like, like a Lincoln Riley or somebody like that. I like a Lincoln Riley. So I like do I. Him. I like a Lincoln Riley too. I, I just yeah. um, I think there's gonna be a lot of competition for him. So what's what's, <laughs> hold on. Why are you still looking at me like that? Because <laughs> I'm not. I'm not done with, with not what the, you said. Well, I was. Uh, I, I, I you was. Said, you said. I don't. You disagree I, with that? I do. I, I do not think Aaron Rodgers is the best QB ever. Best ever. No, I think he has. No, Tom Brady, hands down. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that I think that he has the best the skills skill set, set mm-hmm. probably ever. ever. But I am not putting him over with one ring, and the fact that he's out there, honestly, he's not having a good year this year. No, he's not. He's not having an Aaron Rodgers he's year. Been hurt. He's yeah. Been hurt. Well, you know yeah, he's what? Playing hurt, and he's been playing hurt. Yeah, I, I get it. Right. But you know what? This is football, and people play hurt. Mm-hmm. If if you're out on the field, that means right. you can play. So sure. perform. Right. So. Uh, would you would you say would you say McCarthy is a better coach than um, Brady's coach? You can't than say Belichick. Belichick? You yeah. can't you can't you can't say his name. I don't know. I don't like saying his name. <laughs> it's nothing, something wrong with because that. we're stupid Jet fans. Uh, right. I mean, uh, not, no Belichick. Oh, come on, he's way Belichick. better. Yeah. Belichick is way better. Than so him. let me ask you this: you put you put um, Aaron Rodgers on Green on um, New, New England? England. Yeah. What happens? Um, I still think. But I'm going to give it to you this way. I think Tom Brady is more clutch than Aaron Rodgers. Absolutely. Oh. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I can name another quarterback that I think is more clutch than Aaron Rodgers as well. Give it to me. I can't think <laughs> of it right now. <laughs> 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 he laid down the gauntlet. And I said, what? Joe Montana. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Montana. There you go. Yeah, we Joe got, Montana. I got to pull it yeah, out. My brother, my brother bailed you out right there. <laughs> right? He's like, I'm drawing yeah, a blank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he started blinking. No, I mean, come on. Tom, Tom it, Brady. I'll give it to you. I'll, you know yeah. what? Honestly. I take Drew Brees over Aaron Rodgers. Boy, I could shot. Ooh, I would. Ooh, that's a he's shot of, that's he's shot my favorite the quarterback. That's a shot across that's the bow, right? Yeah, there. it is. Yeah, that's right. I love that's Drew Brees. That's I tough. love Drew Brees. That's tough action. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, Mike McCarthy with Aaron Rodgers should have won more Super Bowls. Yeah, I don't think there's any. No and, and and you had 10 plus wins eight years out of mm-hmm. the 13. You should have won more Super Bowls there. Right. Yeah. Um, now, if you pair him with uh, Belichick, yeah, I think that they win some of those Super Bowls too. However, However, Fo- football is played on the field, mm-hmm. and he doesn't coach the offense. Belichick doesn't coach the offense, FYI. And Tom Brady's out there, Great and point, a lot man. a lot of those games, Tom Brady won 
and he won, I think, with less talent than yes. Aaron Rodgers did. Yes, I agree with you. My I per, agree. My personal opinion, and, okay. and you know what? It's, a good, it's a, both of it. our personal opinions. Yeah, personal yeah. opinions, because I totally agree with you in everything you just said and how you said it. Yes, I agree. Edification. Edification. <laughs> Let's edify. <laughs> what say you, McKenna? You're the <laughs> only sure. one that hasn't uh, ushered an opinion on that. I'm looking at this uh, this Mike McCarthy. I'm 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 like in a rabbit hole over here looking at this Mike McCarthy. Sounds like you're in a foxhole with bullets data. coming at you. No, <laughs> it came back. Um, no, no, so, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, uh, the Mike McCarthy coaching tree is Ben McAdoo, and uh, oh wow, that didn't work out. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> ben McAdoon. Yeah, McAdoon. Yeah, Ben McAdoo. Not. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike McCarthy, I guess, is technically in the Bill Walsh coaching tree because he's under from under Ray Rhodes. Oh. Wow. Okay. So, Going all the way um, I guess he got his start with Ray Rhodes and Marty yeah. Schottenheimer. So, yeah, I don't like that tree. Um, really, it's not. I'm not a fan of that tree. No, that tree doesn't have solid it's, roots. It, no. it doesn't have solid. <laughs> it is, right. And it's, it's got bad fruit too. Yeah, right. it does. It does. It don't even have. They don't even have leaves on it. So, oh, it's all brown. Like it the goes through my discontent. Seriously, it goes to fall real quick over there. <laughs> you know? That's why. Hey, listen. I'm taking John Harbaugh over McCarthy, mm. hands down, without a doubt. I would be happy with either of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you I, know. I, I think I think I'd be happy with either of them as far as like a a manager, and uh, you know somebody somebody who you know is going to be able to do the job. They're both professional, mm-hmm. and they have so, de- and they have quarterback development success. Yeah, I I I think that we'd be okay with either one of them, but um, I wouldn't mind hitting it on one of those like Sean McVay type guys yeah, everybody that is going to come in and completely, right yeah. you know, there's a guy, there's a guy that coaches for Minnesota, uh, university of Minnesota named PJ Fleck. And he's a little bit more of a, a college type, but um, he's got a lot of that Sean McVay type swagger. Um, I don't know if you guys were familiar with the whole uh, West Western Michigan a couple years ago was undefeated kind of like a UCF thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, PJ Fleck was the coach of that team. And he had this whole thing called row the boat, uh, which was uh, a college football thing. But sometimes those college coaches don't translate well to the pros. Yeah. Like Nick sure. Norman. Yeah. That's always a dice. Yeah, we got to get it and, right. And I mean, the old Oregon coach, what is his name? Um, uh, Chip, Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. Yeah. You know, is he, is he McVay or is he Kelly? <laughs> you know, funny. There's a lot of in between, baby. Yeah. I think well, McVay was never in college. He was always, always pro, pro guy. Yeah. So, and he's got that pro pedigree from his grandfather and his father and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So, and he's like a savant. You know, it, they they had the thing on real sports with him. You know, he has that like memory trick where he remembers every single thing that ever happened. Exactly. Oh, yeah, every play. Right. That that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. was just throwing stuff out there. He was just telling him, telling him down down, down in distance how much time was left, what happened after the three plays before. I'm like, yeah. really? Dang, cool. Apparently, that's not as rare as you'd think. They had a whole really? thing on 60 Minutes about that. And mm. uh, Mary Lou Henner from Taxi, she's like that. Oh, she's out she? of the those photographic. Kind of, those, right. Those kind of people pass the bar exam in the first try. Right, right, right. Yeah. they, they School is easy for them. Like right. my cousin. They remember did. everything. Mm. She's savant. <laughs> she, she, must family, have got, she must have got all the smarts. He. <laughs> yeah. no, no, Shout no. out to you, Corey. No, that's, Man, that's Savignon. Cousin. That's Savignon, not Savant. Who's okay. over there getting Savignon. French? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you over there oh. calling you wine. Here we go with the French. Yeah. Darno. Darno. Savignon. Savignon. Savignon Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> Savignon White. <laughs> All right, let's get this moving. I gotta go to see Santa. All Uh-oh. right, you gotta go oh. see Santa. All right, here, well, here it is. Let's do two things. The last one, real quick, who do we want in the draft? I know it's early, but just real quick. And if, if it's not a who, maybe it's, position? it's positions. And give me the top three positions, just real quick. Let's do the round table because I want to talk about some Baldwin stuff with Captain Kyle McKenna. All right. I'll All right. go first. Yeah, yeah. go wide for rec- it. Wide, wide receiver slash O-line, 1A, 1B. Um, and then I think that you don't get an edge rusher past the second round anyway. So – we try to spend the most of our free agent money on edge, Ediga, as uh, Brandon <laughs> says. 
Um, <laughs> Edgar. 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 We'll, we'll, Edgar. we'll get a good a good Edgar in um, in free agency um, to to put next to our developed guys Jenkins and Copeland, who who I like Copeland. He he he's done more than um than Maldon did in three years. Mm-hmm. In just um, one year. Forgot about year. that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know, so get the get the wide receiver and or the O lineman. And if we can trade back and get some value uh, for that trade back, because I think we'll be picking one through five for yep. sure. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you know, what can we get? Can we pick at can we pick it pick at nine or ten and uh and get a second round pick back for it? That'll be sweet. Love it. And then we Love still have three uh I think not three, but two third rounders because we got we we dealt um we dealt uh the quarterback to New Orleans. Um Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Penny. So now we so then if we're able to trade back, we could have a first rounder, a second rounder, and then two threes. And that would really kind of help to catapult things and kind of boost things up a little bit. For me my, my, my prediction my prediction on one of those third rounders is that we're gonna be talking a year from now and it's gonna be one of the best players on our team. Ooh. Just throwing it out Just throwing there. it out there. Throw that Willing out. Willing it to, the to happen. Oh yeah, gosh. man. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Yeah, totally. yeah, right. <laughs> but let, let me let me go next since I, yeah, I ahead, pretty bro. much agree with you. If we cannot trade back, right, and uh get more picks uh in the to replace our first round pick, excuse yeah. me, replace our second round pick that we lost, then I would say we have to draft an offensive lineman as, you know, the best ranked offensive lineman in the draft. And I would I would definitely cite um Jonah Williams out of Alabama. Yeah, but what I'm what what my my point is that the offensive line has significantly improved um of the Indianapolis Colts. Um yeah. he has he has changed the line the landscape of their offense. And um if we can have somebody that does that for us in the first round and we can't trade back, then you know, that's what I would do. I agree with you. So then let's just say we do find a second rounder. What position are you going for after you tackle the the wide receiver? Copy that. And you yeah. know, an, an impact wide receiver. Gotcha. So listen, I I'll, I'll remake the whole thing and I'll throw a free agency in there. Mm-hmm. So for me, Optimally, I like to trade back, and then I pick up Marquise Brown, wide receiver from Marquise. Oklahoma. Uh, I think he's the home run threat that we need. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would go uh, offensive line in the second round after trading back. I think that we trade back just like the Colts got three second rounders from us. Yeah, then right. we could definitely pick up more than just the second round this mm-hmm. year, probably some picks next year too. But yeah. then you tack on a Le'Veon Bell and a Golden Tate. That would be the free agents I go after as well, yeah, totally. um, just to kind of round it out. In addition to going after some defense with the hundred million dollars that we have in free agency. Mm-hmm. Nice. Who nice. do who do who do people want so bad that they're going to give us a lion's share to move up? Um, it's always a quarterback. I mean, yep. you you have uh, Ohio State, um, their quarterback that's coming out, mm-hmm. um, and then you have um, Oregon. You know, yeah. and they have a Herbert. quarterback that's coming out. Herbert. Herbert's coming yep. out too. So listen, it, it all sounds that way until you know the run up to the draft, and then people yeah. really want the quarterbacks, and they start skyrocketing up, you know, draft boards. So yeah. it sounds good. So you have the Giants, you have the Jaguars, who are going to be drafting behind us. Yep, uh, they're not going to move up to one because then that would be just you know ridiculous in order to try to trade up as far as the draft capital they have to give up for that they'd be mortgaging but, their future yeah but trading trading with us where we are four or five somewhere in that range or maybe even three i think that that is a, a great opportunity for them to move up to take one of those quarterbacks and guys there are there are edge rushers and defensive linemen that people that teams want to trade up to get at, at, if we're picking at three that I'm is true you that. that is I'm true telling you that actually yeah. this draft is littered with defensive tackles and defensive ends and edge rushers. That's the big thing in this particular draft. It's not a quarterback draft like last year where where, where you're going to get five in the first round. You're going to get like those, first of all, that 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 whole uh, Clemson front line, they're all going in the first round. Yep. You have that kid <laughs> yes. from Houston. Yep. You know, he, he's going in the first round. Right. And then you have another guy from um, Alabama. So that's just six right off the top right there. And then there's, there's many others that I, I can't even remember, but I saw like you got Nick Bosa going one. Bosa, well. my goodness, yeah, Nick yeah, Bosa exactly. going one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So there's almost a plethora of first round picks that people will be willing to trade up for, as far as um, defensive linemen, interior tackles, as well as outside and Edgars. 
So <laughs> <laughs> and Edgar's. You know, so for me, this is what I would love to see. Um, I'm going to um, piggyback off of what Brian said. I would love to trade back or trade down, get a second rounder. Maybe we can get a little bit more of that, depending. I'm willing to go down to the middle of the of the first round because I think like somebody like a Nikhil Harry, who I happen to like, he's from um, uh, uh, um, Arizona, Arizona State. State, and I happen great to like player. him, a great player. Um, I think that he's a big six foot four, like two hundred and ten pound wide receiver, mm-hmm. sticky glue for hands. He looks like he, David Boston. Well, he's not as jacked as David Boston, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, very yeah, few yes. people oh are. He, he played receiver at two hundred and forty pounds, right? And he was yeah, only six two. Twenty steps are gigantic. That was oh the steroid era. He was a steroid era, <laughs> but um, you know, this guy's six four, two ten, and he is not like a four three speed guy. I'd say he's more of a four fiver, but he is agile. So he is like I love to say this. He's built like a horse, but he does run like a gazelle, and his hands are sticky. Right. And he's my favorite receiver in this draft class. So if we trade back, and I would pick him up in the in, in, in the first round, like say the middle of the first round, and then the next two picks that we have, maybe we doubled up and got two seconds. I don't know. I'm getting O Lyman. O Lyman. So I don't or, think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna last to the middle of the first round. Okay, well, you know what? We play that game on draft day. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say we're like, all right, we want this kid, Harry. Oh, we mm-hmm. can't get him. Let's stay where we are and mm-hmm. let's get Jonah Williams because he's the best offensive lineman, that that big tackle out of um, Alabama. Alabama. Yep. Alabama. So mm-hmm. either way, I don't want to see a defensive. I'm seeing mock drafts already, and we're picking up like a, a D, No, no, a, a D lineman from like Clemson. Right. I'm done with the whole D lineman thing, guys. That's it right now. I think I think well, that's if we stay where we are. I think that's what they're saying. That's what they're even, saying. Yeah. If we stay where but we even that, I wouldn't even do that. They're not going to mock exactly. for the trade down. No. They're not going right. to mock for the trade. Right, down. right. But but if we stay where we are, and if this kid uh, Jonah Williams is there, we got to get him. We absolutely have to get even, him. Even if we over, even if it's overreaching. Yeah, I and some mock drafts. The one I, I saw the other day, they had him going number two. Yikes! They yeah, did, huh? and I would. That was December fifteenth. Wow. I haven't watched yeah. any film. That was this yesterday, guy, so I, I don't know. I don't know wow. personally if he's, if he's worth that type of. There'll be tackle. plenty of time to watch that. We'll definitely be watching that. You know, that's what we got to do. That's all, what we got to do all, all off season. But yeah, Captain <laughs> Kyle McKenna, let's talk about uh, the Baldwin Bruins a little bit and some sporting news and and stuff. I understand that you have a little bit of information. Um, Long Island's own Al Iaquinta. He uh, just had a UFC fight uh, uh, last night. He won by decision. It was a really good fight. I watched most of it, and I happen to know him just a little bit. I don't know him, know him, but um, he is uh, from the Ray Longo, Matt Serra camp over there in Garden City. And uh, back when I was in uh, better shape, I used to train there a little bit. So, you know, but I don't want to say that because I'm not in good shape anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for Kerry to say something because he's staring at me. I see. But yeah, no, yeah, no. you know. Um, but he he was a great kid. He's got great hands, hits hard, and um, very determined. And uh, he's a nice guy. And he's from Wanta. So uh, Kyle, I know that you have some news about um, Ally Quinta in general so regarding got, that with Baldwin. We got on the um, we got on the 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 group chat last night when this fight was about to come off. Um, you know, it's a little earlier for me out in Seattle. It was a little later for you guys. Um, but this was the, the co-main event on UFC, uh, on Fox, I guess it was, um, FS1, I believe. Yeah, no, it was on, it was on real Fox. It mm-hmm. was on the actual Fox. Okay. Um, the channel five Fox. And I think it's the last one that they're doing either for the year or forever. I'm not sure, uh, what they meant with that, but. Uh, they had uh, Edson Barbosa and Hooker before that. That was the co-main event. And then Iaquenta versus Kevin Lee was the, the last fight. And they had fought before, uh, and Al Iaquenta had won that fight. So this was a rematch. And Kevin Lee apparently has gotten a lot better since then. So the odds were in Kevin Lee's favor. Now, yeah. the connection between Al Iaquenta and Baldwin, it's a little bit convoluted, but it, it is a connection. Jay Iaquinta is Al Iaquinta's father. He was the longtime head coach at Hewlett, mm. before that at Lindbrook. Um, but for one year, in 1989, he was the defensive coordinator at Baldwin with Coach Carroll, um, with Coach Steve Carroll, Coach Rich Carroll. And the installation of Rich Carroll's 50 front kind of started with uh, that year that 
Iaquinta was there. So oh, wow. I was, we were 10th graders at the time, me, uh, Brian and Brandon and, um, Homer Claire got hurt that year at the end of the year. He hurt, so I went, he hurt his thigh, right? Or his, or his hamstring, if I remember was, correctly, right? Or his was, groin. It was a season ending in, uh, injury. I think it was like a, a sprained knee or, lower body. or thigh. Well, Homer Claire <laughs> was yoked up too. So it's like, you know, <laughs> like body armor on Homer Claire. Yeah. Uh, but I had to take his place at linebacker for the last two games. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, like my my time working with, with Coach Iaquenta. And then he immediately got the head coach job at Hewlett after that. So mm -hmm. it was like a it was like a stop off point between two jobs that he had. But um he had a lot to do with Coach Carroll and how he formulated that defense that that Brandon you know, you were the nose guard in that defense, which was a big, a big part of how that defense worked. Um, right. You know, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I mean, you know, I, I was a nose tackle there and uh, two gap responsibility. And um, um, I just fell in love with, uh, I remember the year before I played more of a defensive tackle and I was like going back and forth, but I really fell in love with the nose tackle position um, once I cemented in there. And um, yeah, so basically, in in a defense like that, you're like the you're you're the base that everything hangs on to. So you really have to be able yep. to take on double teams. Um, you really have to be able to hold your ground so that you can take those double teams, so that the linebackers can kind of run more free and make tackles. And you and Tehran were tackling machines, and Simo Simonetti coming mm -hmm. from his uh, strong safety position were tackling machines back then. So. I had to maintain my gap responsibility left and right, both a gaps and um, also being able to control the center and control the guard while also giving that middle push as well. So that's, yeah. that's what I tried to focus on all the way back in the day in high school football. But um, I learned if a lot. If I remember correctly, they also flexed you at one point and put you like three yards off the ball. Yeah, they did. Played like a, like a semi linebacker position. And I team. loved it. I loved it. I was like, <laughs> they should be. that was? Uh, I remember us installing it in the but off season. We didn't really run it. <laughs> no, no, we, we did run it. We 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 we, we did. Uh, we, I think we got it from Massapequa because Massapequa would line a little bit farther back so that when the ball was snapped while they're going in, they can kind of read the play developing before mm -hmm. making contact. And they kind of wanted to do that, and we installed it um, our senior year. And I remember playing. In a scrimmage, I think it was against against uh, West Hempstead, and mm -hmm. then um, uh, there was a pass. So then I, I got out of my stance, pulled up, and dropped back a little bit. And this guy was crossing over the middle, and then I just laid into this dude, and I just felt like, <laughs> "Yo, I'm a linebacker!" Like <laughs> I just, I felt like, you know, like listen, you know. <laughs> so I, I think it was like me and you that kind of collided with the guy. It was either me and you or me and Tehran, and we both simultaneously hit him. The ball was like jarred loose, and we were all fired up, and and it was an away scrimmage, and I think it was against West Hempstead. I think West Hempstead. I think because they had like a wing T type of deal. Yeah, and yeah. that's when that's when you do that. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So that would have been you know two years after I I Quinta was the DC there, and he went on to Hewlett, won a bunch of uh, conference three, I believe, championships in at Hewlett, and he actually when I installed the shield punt. Um, he's the one that gave me all that stuff. So, uh, that his son is Al who's, who's fighting. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's like kind of the connection to Baldwin, but also Chris Weidman who Baldwin. had the gym, uh, who also played football at Baldwin, uh, is part of that stable, that Ray Longo stable. So Absolutely. good night. Good night yeah. for Long Island last night. It's yeah. always good. Long Island is very well represented in the MMA world. Absolutely, and, uh, and it's and all coming from one gym, which I absolutely love. It's yeah, awesome well, for the most part. For the most part, well, Sarah's gym out out east too is, is a big part of that too. Matt, Sarah, yeah, well, well, it's a Sarah Longo gym, basically. It, right. it, it's a Sarah Longo it's two team different locations of the same team of right? the same team. Exactly. You get your jujitsu over there at Sarah's. You get your stand up over at Ray's, and 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 their gym together. It's uh. It's it's Ray Longo and uh, Weidman's gym together, basically. So it's called Law yeah. MMA. Longo, right. um, 
and uh, Weidman. And Weidman MMA. Yeah, yeah. But it's all Team Sarah, Team Longo, man. So, yeah, congrats yeah. to those guys. Love it. It also says a lot about how good the wrestling is on Long Island. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It always has been. Shout out to Ed Haller watching. Yes, sir. And wrestling that, and, ref. And that Baldwin base, you know, shout out to Shippos, that whole Shippos family yeah. with, with, with yeah. the wrestling. Got to love them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? It's big time. Coach Mr. Shippo. Crespi. Mr. Mr. Crespi, Crespi yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, Mr. Crespi. Shout out to yeah. Crespi. Next time yeah. we can talk about that that wrestling uh, coaching tree. Um, you know, Ray, Mike Adams, Ray, and... Ray Adams at uh, Long yeah. Beach has, yep. has, has, has a tradition that rivals um, Shippos from his earlier years. So, hey, great, great job. Great job. Absolutely, absolutely. Mike Robinson, too, you know. Let's, you know, go Baldwin, you know. So, guys, hey, listen, man. This was another good one, entertaining. Thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK Podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK Podcast fan page, Twitter on BKBK Podcast, IG at BKBK Podcast, as well as on YouTube. Just type in the BKBK Podcast, hit the like and the subscribe button to show the love. And if you can't watch us, you can also listen to us in your car, on your smart device or whatever. And you can find us at on iTunes at bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. That's it. Let's go Jets. Let's go Baldwin Bruins. And let's go Team BKBK. That's right. Thank you.